Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada News Megs on the broadcast today. Congressman Mark Amaday of CD2 joins us. He's here for the whole show on an all new Nevada News News. Big R in Sparks is located on Bering Boulevard next to Smith's and across from Reed High School. It's a 50,000 square foot hardware store and a whole lot more. It's huge with clothing, power equipment, tools, and of course, hardware. Big R is located on Bering Boulevard and Sparks, next to Smith's and opposite Reed High School. Big R, hardware, and a whole lot more. The Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. Save money and take transit. Did you know you can ride the bus all day for less than what it would cost you for a gallon of gas? Plan your trip now by going to rtcwashoe.com. When in Carson City, Nevada Newsmakers records in the conference room at the Bank Saloon. Coverage of the 2023 legislative session is brought to you by Liberty Dental Plan, making members shine one smile at a time. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. The Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County, your RTC, our community. NV Energy, proudly serving Nevada, providing electricity to 2.4 million electric customers. And by Nevada Builders Alliance, building a better Nevada. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad on No Holds Barred Political Forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're always pleased to welcome back to the program Congressman Mark Amaday of CD2. We're in your hometown of Carson City here at the Bank Saloon in the Conference Center. You have been here for decades when it was Jack's Bar. <laughs> I, I would say to you, let's go through memory lane here, but I think that we probably end up indicting a lot of people. All I have to say, Sam, is welcome to Nevada's capital. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So. Um, have you ever seen anything like the media circus surrounding the Trump indictment? You know, there was a phrase I heard a week ago, national corporate media, which I, I think is a phenomenally descriptive phrase. And, and it doesn't have, you know, it's not punching somebody in the nose or whatever, but that's the reality of, of, of I think that's a fair description. And in, in one sense, it's Groundhog Day. I mean, you had the original... Russia thing on impeachment and oh my God and that committee and, and uh, uh, Schiff and those people and then it was the January 6th one which was done in a week with no process and no oh my God and then you know it's just been a series of things where um, and listen there's people that don't like Donald Trump and they have their reasons and I get that but it's like this has become so in the bag for anything any opportunity, even what is an opportunity, if we can create one to basically say he's the devil, then it's like, that's what they're doing. Which is, you know, I still believe it's America. Well, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. But when people on the other side do that, they're dirty, rotten SOBs and, and shame on them. So it, in one way, it, I think it's just Groundhog Day. Um, if, uh, if the folks that are working with Donald Trump are, are using their noodles and he's taking that advice, they probably created some opportunities for him that weren't there before this. Um, you know, the other part of this is, um, and, 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 you know, I mean, you know, take aside the whole legal ramifications. The thing that amuses me is that the indictment was on Monday. And three, four days later, every cable news network is still covering this as breaking news. Yeah. The next hearing is in December. Yeah. Is there, are there other things that we could be talking about that maybe are important issues? But no, Donald Trump sells newspaper airtime, it ain't going away. Yeah. And, well, and does the punishment fit the crime? Because the punishment is destroy the man's character, no matter what, 
when there are other investigations that could be far more serious than paying off somebody to for whatever. They, to say they never made out or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the other thing, too, is you sit there and you start to look at that, and it has been so dogmatic and so long that you start to say, well, next year there's a thing called the presidential election. I don't know who the Republican nominee will be or who the Democratic nominee will be, but there's, there's starting to be some... You're getting some stain on the other side from, really, this is what you got? Um, and so that, that'll be up to those respective campaigns, whoever they are, to, to use that in, a, in an effective way. Um, you know what it was. You've got a fatigue factor on Donald Trump. You've also got a fatigue factor on the other side, like, like you just said. What else you got? And then the ultimate question is, so, so what's that growing segment of the voting population? How are they going to react to all this? which are the non-Democrat, non-Republican registered voters. And if you go back and start to analyze why did Donald Trump get elected in the first place, whether you like him or not, it was because there were a lot of people in this country who felt that politicians were not representing them when they got to Congress or to the presidential, uh, uh, to the White House. And so they were looking for somebody, and they found somebody who they believed from television, 18 years of, of, of negotiating, that he was the person. They still are not satisfied with the status quo. Oh, no. Well, and it also helped them that he was running against somebody called Hillary Clinton. I, I mean, there was value in that. Um, the, the challenge for a Trump campaign let, let's, in the primary is, how do you focus people on what your accomplishments were while you were in there for those four years, because there's a good story to be told there. But the Democrats' challenge is, how do you focus them on anything but that? Oh, by the way, on anything but what's been going on in the present administration, and let's just talk about what a dirty, rotten bugger we think Donald Trump is. Is that, you know, can that not be applied to Jim Gibbons in Nevada uh, when he had done what he said he was going to do? Uh, he had the support for the first couple of years, then the people that brought him to the party decided to go dance with Brian Sandoval, yeah. and suddenly all the money disappeared and Brian Sandoval became the governor. Yeah, um, absolute accurate description. Um, and, and nothing against Governor Sandoval, I, I no. mean, great public servant, but, but you're sitting there going, really? So this guy's a one-term governor um, who now joins the ranks of uh, of, uh, Steve Sisolak joins him on the other side, and, and, and so you're sitting there going, you know, that's an unusual circumstance in Nevada. And, to to and, say the least. You've got to go back to Bob List for that. Yeah, and, and, and then you're sitting there looking at some of the stuff where the teachers union decided they were Switzerland and stuff, and you're going, I never thought I'd see that ever. But anyhow. We'll, we'll, we'll take a break. We'll come back here in Carson City, your hometown, <laughs> after this timeout. <laughs> Lexus cash and free play giveaways at Tamarack. Weekly cash and free play winners plus a 20,000 cash winner guarantee. And drive home a brand new Lexus NX30 or walk away with 42,500 in cash. It's a good time to win at Tamarack Casino. Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Located in the heart of Carson City, the Bank Saloon is a historic watering hole with a modern feel. With a variety of classic cocktails featuring Nevada spirits, space for private events, conferences, and an incredible atmosphere, the Bank Saloon offers a great location to work and play. Come visit us. Located at the corner of 5th and Carson, we'll save you a drink. The Do It Right guys at Nevada Heating have one mission. Your furnace breaks down today, we fix it today. Why freeze for days while your furnace is down when Nevada Heating can get the job done today and you can get warm again? For nearly 50 years, locally owned Nevada Heating has been getting the job done right. Call today at 323-5585 and we'll fix it today. That's 323-5585 or online at nevadaheating.com. This is Nevada Newsmakers. 
And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Congressman Mark Amade of CD2. So, um, as part of a delegation, you're going to have to be involved in the second airport for Las Vegas, which is uh, going to be in the Ivanpah Valley. We've called it Ivanpah for years. It is going to be a huge development and huge for economic development in, in addition. And yet, so little has been written about it. Rick Vallada did a good article a couple of weeks ago, but for the most part, people have no clue what this is. Why does it seem to be hidden? You know, I just think people are, it, it's not sexy to talk about it yet, or there's other sexier, violent stuff to talk about. Um, but planning and zoning, as, as you know, as well as anybody, that's the province of those city councils and that county commission in the case of Clark County. And so when you talk about, because ultimately this is land use, and, and so you sit there and say, well, what do you want to do at Reed, formerly McCarran, and how's it going to work with what's going on in North Las Vegas, and what about the Nellis factor, and then, you, you know, and so that's down there that seems like a good spot. And, and so we're at the point, at least from a federal land use perspective is, so talk to us, Clark County, and by the way, we'll carry the ball for you, but you got to be on board. And that is, it's like, wh where's your county resolution, city council resolution, whatever that says, this is what we want, because when you've been doing this for a while, you don't want to be rushing out there and, and find out that what you rushed out onto was a, was a plank instead of a playing field. And so it's like, Tell us what you want, and then own it, and we'll deliver for you. Is there any doubt, because I mean, they've been doing environmental impact statements for years. Uh, Southern Nevada Water Authority already has the commitment for water to go out in that direction. Um, my understanding is that MB Energy is involved, and Rosemary Vassiliadis, the head of the airport, um, addressed a whole group of uh, gaming entities uh, in Las Vegas not too long ago uh, to let them know that she was coming to the legislature. I'm not sure what she's asking for, but that, but that leads us to an interesting question, which, which is, who pays for it? Well, like any development project, um, it's, it's a stronger ask if you're like, this is how it's going to pay for itself. Um, or if you're going to use municipal or state funding or whatever, then it's like, here's why it's a good buy for you, and you're going to get your money back in the form of these revenues, those revenues, whatever the heck. Um, and so that formula hasn't changed, but, but it, um, what you don't want to be is, hey, we're kind of hoping for a favor here and a whatever there and, and whatever. Um, that's when it gets co complicated. As you know from watching down there, the most recent stuff on stadiums and other stuff, and for years, bullet trains to Southern California, and to name just a few of those things that are uh, that are innovative, but you got to make sure you're not basically wounding yourself to do it in a, in a fiscal sense as, as the local entities and in the case of the legislature, the state. I think in Rick's article he talked about Brightline already making uh, plans to have a stop at that airport mm -hmm. on the way in which would be the light rail component. The thing that surprised me, and I've talked about it a little bit on the program before, is that instead of just freight, which was the original idea when Randy Walker was in charge of the airport, uh, they're now talking about actually moving airlines there. Um, the point made on the program was, well, you know, you look at Denver, you look at other airports, a 25-minute train ride is not a big deal or a drive to get into Las Vegas. Um, I, I just can't believe this, this idea that the airport runs out of space in 2030, but you don't have Ivanpah in place till 2037. That sounds like an interesting ploy to get the money quicker to get this done because it needs to be done. Well, I, I think ultimately as an overall issue, it needs to be done. That's accurate. Um, you, you know, the challenge will be when you say, well, you look at Denver, you look at, at DFW, you look at whatever, it is like, well, you've got this situation now where I can see in the internal politics amongst airlines, you want to land in view of the strip just because that speaks for itself. The question is, in a land use sense, can you sustain that? What do they got? Fifty-four million people kind of coming and coming it's through McCare or read every day and, and that sort of stuff. So it's like well, perhaps not fifty-four million a day, I, I, but, I, yeah. but over time, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. Rose may be doing a hell of a job. <laughs> fifty-four million a day. Don't tell anybody that, Sam. It's a secret. But anyhow, 
So it, it's like, hey, how do you evolve? And, and, and the site selection, I think, in terms of, well, what do you want in terms of space? What do you want in terms of... Isn't that already all done? I mean... I, I think it is because it's... When you look around, Sam, it's not like, well, it should have been here or there right. or wherever. It's like, that's kind of the only place where it could go, which then morphs into should go. All right, let's take another break and we'll come back and we'll talk about one of my other favorite topics, lithium, after okay. this timeout. Imagine a magical garden that feeds Carson City's hungry and homeless, teaches our high school students agriculture, creates hanging floral displays to beautify downtown, and yet charges nothing. It's not magic. It's the Greenhouse Project. It's real, it's growing, and it needs your help. Go online to CarsonCityGreenhouse.org so together we can grow it forward. The casino industry drove Nevada's economy for decades. By the 1990s, however, the state's sole industry was in sharp decline. Many were losing their homes, many were leaving the state. Is Reno on track to be the Detroit of the West? Was an October 2010 Reno Gazette Journal headline. Nevada knew it was time for a change and a time to diversify. Story County took that lead, took risks, invested tens of millions transforming its desert into a place of opportunity and a future for Nevada families needing something new. That desert now provides thousands of high paying tech, advanced manufacturing, and energy careers at companies like Tesla, Panasonic, Google, Switch, and Redwood Materials. Story County transformed Northern Nevada forever, and the tide of opportunity has raised all vessels through construction contracts, high paying careers, and the power of payroll. Tens of millions have been generated in sales and property tax, permits, and other revenues for Reno, Sparks, Washoe County, and for all of Nevada. Enough, in fact, to generate a surplus after public services are provided. And best of all, a sustainable economic climate has been created, enabling our children to stay in Nevada and live prosperous lives in their home state. Story County, improving Northern Nevada one industry at a time. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Congressman Mark Amade of CD2 Lithium. Um, THACA pass, got its approval. It seems like, um, from a federal perspective, that lithium has now become an issue of national security. Well, uh, I don't think that's a bold statement, Sam. Um, although when you look at, um, and, and listen, THACA pass has, has looks like it's ending up in the right spot. It wasn't anything where, where, where that applicant said, hey, can you give us a, a pass on this, a that, or whatever. It's like whether it's cultural resources, whether it's air quality, uh, uh, the, the whole nine yards, it's like they have embraced all of those issues and dealt with them in a responsible way. And, and yet you, you still had to basically climb up a pretty steep hill on multiple occasions, which you sit there and you go, well, present administration, this is a priority for you um, in terms of strategically and in terms of economically and in terms of environmentally. Um, although, you know, technology keeps moving, there's probably people out there going, well, lithium's old stuff or whatever, but for right now, it's new stuff. And, and it seems like it's gonna stay that way when people like Ford and GM and all that are out buying production in advance. And, and it's like, well, I think it's gonna be around for a little while. I don't think they're waiting for the next, next generation of whatever. Having said all that, it's still phenomenally difficult to comply with the rules in a timely manner. The rules aren't bad things. The, time, the timely part is always the challenge. And this administration, um, while they say, I want it, I want it, I want it, this is the way we want you to go, this is the way we're going to try to force you to go, but it's like, well then, you have abundant resources that can be responsibly extracted in this country, and especially in Nevada, and it's like, it's still very hard. Uh, Rylite Ridge also is moving forward with yeah. Ioneer. Yeah. Um, they, they appear to have protected my good friend Jerry Teams, uh, uh, Teams Buckwheat. Um, <laughs> And, and that project is moving forward. It seems from all the people we've had on the show that we can literally do end to end for lithium from you know, getting it out of the ground to recycling it. Yeah, and, and, and we should. 
um, it, it can be done responsibly. So that bit where, you know, Sam, it gets down to, you know, it's amazing how common sense, it's like, well, we don't want to talk about that. It's like, nobody wants dirty air. Nobody wants dirty water. Nobody wants contaminated soil. Nobody wants to destroy critical environmental, any of this or that. So you say, well, okay, well, then everybody's kind of, this, especially Nevadans. Um, and, and so you say, okay, so we're all good. We're on the same. Oh, no. And, and then it's like, well, my version versus your version. And it's incredibly frustrating when you're trying to move us into less carbon, move us into responsible extraction of, of mineral resources, move us into economic security, strategic security, all that stuff where you're going, well, why isn't that accomplishable? And, and, and I'll just say this, in a lot of areas today, we started off with, it's like there's more focus on, on the political elbowing than there is solving the problem and dealing with the issues. And, and you've, this is, you know, the buckwheat issue, um, was something was like, well, this is solvable. Or up on uh, Thacker Pass, where it's like, well, what's the deal? Are there, are there cultural resources that need, you know, all that stuff is like, hey, it's, it's incredibly achievable. Why aren't we making people be responsible, fine, and then getting on with it? Um, when you look at Ormat suing over a toad that's on the endangered species list, first of all, do they have a prayer of getting that off of there? And second of all, there's this giant conflict between, as you were saying earlier, what we're trying to accomplish with green energy and all the things that are being thrown at it to say, whoa. Well, since you brought Ormat up, here's, here's the thing that we're actually meeting with Fish and Wildlife here in, in the next uh, three weeks to go, wait a minute, first time in nine years this emergency listing has been done? Oh, and by the way, the Bureau of Land Management was a long ways through their stuff in collaboration with Fish and Wildlife. And it's like, aren't you people on the same team? How did you get on a different team? And the question's been asked, and the answer so far has not been very finely focused. Like, here's the problem. It's like Sam Shad screwed up, and, and he wouldn't come off of where he did. And so, and, and so we're getting to the bottom of, the, of that to go, hey, uh, when you got federal agencies kind of elbowing each other over, in this case, the Dixie Valley toad, it's like, I'm not saying who's right or who's wrong. I just want to know why the two of you ended up on, on the floor in a wrestling match. And, oh, by the way, that, that ended with, with a tool that hasn't been used in almost a decade, and it's geothermal. And, and so if there's stuff, anyhow, th that story's got a few more chapters to be written in it. But, but the overall thing going forward is, if you're going through the process with, with the agency that's supposed to be the, the lead on that, collaborating with, in this case, Fish and Wildlife, and then all of a sudden Fish and Wildlife leaves the room and goes and makes a phone call and says, hey, emergency listing, haven't done that in a long time. It's like, I, I, I want to know how two and two got to be four in that thing. And so we'll get to the bottom of that. Because, well, you know, another interesting one to watch is in eastern Nevada with the big wind project. Yes. Because nobody likes to look at. They like the power, but they don't like to look at that. And so you're like, well, we'll see how this one goes. Um, has anybody heard of evolution in regards to endangered species that over time, over the millennia, things have come and gone, including all forms of humans? Um, I, I don't see anywhere where the guarantee says, it wasn't even in the Ten Commandments, sorry, I'm just kidding about that, that, you know, everything stays forever. Well, Noah did a pretty good job, though. Here's the thing. It, it serves a certain interest group to be able to say, the standard is nothing goes away. And, and so it's like, well, listen, I, that sounds okay to me. I mean, I don't want to see stuff go away. Um, I don't think anybody does. But it has to be in context. Um, so it's not like it's okay for something to go away, but, but it seems like the challenge is to keep the context, like, well, what can we do? The buckwheat was an issue. It's growing in a greenhouse 15 miles from where we're sitting right now. That's nowhere near Fish Lake Valley. That doesn't mean, okay, mission accomplished, touchdown, everybody, you know, go back into the locker room. But you're going, well, what's the importance of this in that context? And so they have to get through it. But, you know, Sam, it's no secret that, that part of the strategy in some of this stuff is, if we can make it hard enough for long enough, you'll go away. And it's like, well, maybe that's true, and it has been true in some instances, but what have you accomplished in terms of the arguments on the other side, in, 
you know, it's a value judgment. It's like, no, nope, we don't want any value judgments. We want it our way. Do you see, and we've only got a minute left, um, any of the lands bills across the state coming through in 2023-2024? Yeah. Well, well let, let me answer it this way real quick. We're going to pass lands bills out of the House of Representatives this year. And then they go over to the Senate. We're talking with Senator Manchin's staff, David Brooks, and stuff like that directly to go, what has been your objection on stuff in the past to see if Sam, oh my God, well, if we can change this, change that, or whatever till it works for you, great. But make no mistake, we're moving lands bills out of the House of Representatives this year. And you say, why this year? People get attention deficit disorder in, in presidential years. And, and then if the Senate wants to own killing them all, then it's, it's like, hey, my, my colleague Jackie Rosen, that's not a good day, day for you. So hopefully, you know, she can bring a different result on some of that stuff. And that's where we have to leave it, sir. Always so much more. Thank you for being here. Come back soon. Yes, sir. And we'll be right back. Come join the month-long celebration during the Carson Valley Inn 13th Anniversary Giveaway with guaranteed $1,000 winners every drawing night and a $13,000 grand prize winner guaranteed. Come celebrate with us during the 13th Anniversary Giveaways at the Carson Valley Inn. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Southwest Specialties has been making the homes and businesses of Nevada beautiful for more than 20 years. Their experienced designers and craftsmen create the walkways, backyards, water features, and a variety of outdoor cooking areas that add curb appeal and value to your investment. Call today or visit them at their website and see how they can make your outdoor spaces special. Southwest Specialties, creative, distinctive, beautiful. Save money and take transit. Did you know you can ride the bus all day for less than what it would cost you for a gallon of gas? Plan your trip now by going to rtcwashoe.com. When in Carson City, Nevada Newsmakers records in the conference room at the Bank Saloon. Coverage of the 2023 legislative session is brought to you by Liberty Dental Plan, making members shine one smile at a time. Pro Group Management, Workers' Comp that works for you. The Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County, your RTC, our community. NV Energy, proudly serving Nevada, providing electricity to 2.4 million electric customers. And by Nevada Builders Alliance, building a better Nevada. Our thanks to the Bank Saloon in Carson City and the Builders Alliance for their help with our coverage of the 2023 legislative session. We'll see you on the next broadcast.